This is Flora Hewitt Harris interviewing Corianne Williams on the 14th of December in Balsall Heath, Birmingham. Corianne migrated from Port Antonio, Jamaica to Birmingham with her younger brother when she was 17. So, Corianne, uh, please tell me about your earliest memory or earliest collections of memories. I can remember. Let's see, this is about four, five when I started school. And I attended, um, it's called Titchfield School, where they've got infants, the junior, the senior, and the secondary school all in the one place. And I can remember, um, it used to be like a, the building, so it used to be soldiers were there during the war, I think. And because you've got all the batteries and the guns that's pointed out to see. So you can play, you can run from one side underneath, which is a bit dark some places, over to the other side when you're playing games with your friends. And uh, my nan, I grew up with my nan because my mom lives somewhere else. So where I grew up, we had everything we needed. All the fruits, everything. Anything we had to go and buy was like sugar sometime. Otherwise, we could make our own sugar from sugar cane. Uh, we bought like the Demerara sugar, that's the ones dry sugar you'd buy flour um if you needed fish you'd go by the seaside and you stand and wait until the boats come seem to and you just buy fish and it's all threaded on a string um we live by a river which runs by the back of the house and at the back of our house because we had like a three bedroom at the back and the front bedroom's got an orange tree there at the back you've got a grapefruit tree but those were very sour mm -hmm. so we engrafted um, a sweet grapefruit onto the sour one so sometimes in the nights, if you feel peckish, you can open the window and pick a grapefruit. Um, we had apples, oranges, grapefruit in the garden. And then our grandparents planted, there was like bananas and all different types of stuff planted around the place and over on the other side from our house well we had another house in the garden as well there was um three houses two was rented out and on the other side we had a sweet grapefruit tree where we used to climb and then not far from our house we used to have a very deep river where people used to baptize. So you sit in the grapefruit tree and watch what's going on. And then people pass by and you'd throw them a grapefruit. Um, my friends, I've got, well, a couple of friends to know from when I was young, because one, used to go when we were on school holidays we used to go to her house she lives far away on a hill and in front of her house you've got all the relatives that were buried there the tombs so we just sit there and play jacks or we go to the river and we'd catch up now you call it we call it janga which i think it's probably in it's just like a liquor lobster, mini things. You move a stone or liquor, like liquor scorpions. So we'd go fishing. 
um, I live with my cousins as well and we do strange things we tease the dog but we'd have to climb the tree and he'd sit there and if you tease him you can't get out get down from the tree so that's how naughty we were and we'd sneak out in the nights my cousins and I and go up the river because that's when the crayfish comes out things like that we did oops um, school was fun because as I said um, I've got several friends many of them emigrate to different places America, Canada but there's a few that still left in Jamaica because I spent a month with one of them a few weeks, about a month ago. Yeah, a couple of months, a couple of months ago. And then some of the others came in a visit. Um, when I left my primary school, and then I go to like a private one where they taught you short and bookkeeping. Um, what else did we do? That was Mrs. White. So you've got to pay for that. We did um, Spanish. Yeah, Spanish. Short and typing, bookkeeping, English and maths. Then my granddad used to work stivido on the ships when they come into the harbours. So whenever we finish working and it's payday and you can hear him coming up the hill because he used to come up and then give you some money. And then and then you could pay your school fee as well, you pay the school fee as well. And this is white. Um, let's see, that's about when I was about 16, yeah, because I only went one year, because my brother was supposed to come to England, but the person my parents got to bring him up, I don't know what happened there, so I had to come instead. So that's how come I ended up here. This was like September 1961. And started working on the Mosley Road, and that's a tailor's place. That was just a few days after the came, about a week after. Because before I came, I used to do, my college was like four days a week. Fridays, I usually go to sewing. Where they taught you to make dresses and stuff like that to embroidery all kinds of different stuff so that's what I usually would do on Fridays on Saturdays I'd go to the market with my nan and my cousin and when we get back we'd cook we'd cook soup because you could buy your meat because all our stuff is fresh nothing's frozen Everything's fresh. Beef, pork. Um, we didn't have sheep, we had lamb. Not lamb, goat meat. So those were like our main stuff. And then you grow your own chickens, you have your own chickens running about. So we had those in the garden. And we had cows, horse, donkeys. loads of chickens so you just and get the eggs from the chickens as well so I had a good childhood and as I said we didn't eat anything so when I was 16 I came to England Sorry, 16, yes, 17, I came to England, sorry, 17. And 
met my husband here and we got married 11 months later and he died three years ago but we keep going backwards and forward to the Caribbean because at one time he lived there and I live here but then he came back about 10, 12 years ago he came back because he wasn't very well so he needed someone to look after him but in between he'd come spend six months, 12 months come back, go because he likes the sunshine which I wasn't bothered and the kids were here anyway so we had four children one died when he was about 24 because he had an ulcer and he died nobody knew he had an ulcer which bursts inside that's the eldest one so I've still got three left two girls and a boy and my youngest daughter she lives with me because for my husband to fund his life in Jamaica he sold his share of the house to my daughter so I kept half a share and she had off so he could come and go as he pleases and we've got a house out there nobody lives in it But now and then, every so often, we go and we visit. Oops. Is that enough? Uh, so, going back a little bit, could you tell me anything about your family history? Um, such as my mom, my dad. My stepdad, because my dad left traveling, I think he went to America. And just before I got married, I was told he was living in Sheffield. He just died. But then my mom was married to my stepdad. Um, let's 19... Three, I think it was 1953. Yeah, they got married. And then Daddy came, well, my uncle came first, then Daddy, then my mom, then my uncle sent for his wife, because I've got loads of cousins. I think about nine cousins live all around Birmingham. Well, yeah, that's it. Well, I think most of them are living in Birmingham. I think one lives in London. No, one lives in London, one lives in Wales. And I'm not sure where the other girl lives. But I only meet her when it's a mother's birthday and we all congregate in King's Seat. So, and my mother now, she lives in Wolverhampton. And my sister lives in Wolverhampton because I've got uh, two sisters and two brothers. So one of my sister lives in Wolverhampton. One lives in Atlanta. My brother lives in Brighton. And I've got a brother who lives down the road. And he does catering. Because he's cook, do for weddings and funerals and then I think he cooks for some elderly people somewhere along Edward Road. I'm not sure exactly where it is. About 25, 30 people daily he cooks for them. My sister in Wolverhampton, she used to be a teacher, but she's now retired. My brother lives in Brighton, uh, and I think he still does recruitment. He recruits black and Asian to go into teaching. And my sister in Atlanta, she writes medical stuff for the doctors. 
and a computer present she isn't well. So, and we all get along and they all come here for Christmas and then New Year I'll go to my sister in Wolverhampton. I've got um, three granddaughters, one grandson, which I see, well I used to see them every week, but had enough. <laughs> so it says once a month, sometimes I come twice or so. And I sometimes babysit for one of my granddaughters, the little boys. Um, my two other granddaughters, one's got a little girl, um, Natalia, where is she? Oh, there she is. And that's my grands great grandson, those are all great grand. And over there's my mum and my daughter Joy that lives here. And down below is my daughter Sylvia. That's me, that's Drayden, Joy, and the granddaughters. I think that's my brother in the corner, one of them, that lives local. Yes, so we all have our get together ever so often, like at birthdays. If we don't go out, they'll come here and then we'll have a little get together. And if it's over in Wolverhampton, my sister will do arrange everything that side with her daughter, my niece. Okay, see, my husband died, I think, three years ago in August. My stepdad died the 1st of January last year because we were all standing around his bed. My sister from America. My two daughters and the granddaughter, I think there was six of us round his bed when he passed away because we were talking to him. And then my sister says, oh, I can't see him breathing. So we went and got the nurse and she came and she says, can you all go outside for a bit, which we did. And then she went and got someone else and then they come back and pressed, said, he'd gone. Which was okay, because we were there with him, didn't go off on his own like. And my mum, she still lives in Wolverhampton, because she'll be over Christmas. She was 91 on the 26th of November, and she still gets about and do her own thing. So, because when daddy died, he was 90. And my uncle's wife that lives in Kingsley, she's 91 as well. Because I went up on her birthday and sat with her and one of her daughters. We had a good, and then her son turned up, one of her sons. So we had a good old chin wag. And, and she has So as a, as a child and as a teenager, um, what were your thoughts about traveling and migrating? Was it something you ever imagined yourself doing? No. Because I didn't plan on coming to England, but because my brother was too young to come on his own, I had to come with him. And here I am went back to Jamaica about five years later because I was married then so I went back and I took my two youngest children which is Joy and Michael we were there for about six weeks and then several years later took the two Ellis and we were there for another six weeks so we keep coming you know, going backwards and forwards. So we kind of settled here. 
So now all I do is pop over for a month or so and come back. Because most of the family is here. Because I've got, I've got just one cousin. I think that still lives out there. All the others. Um, there's another young lady. She's not really related, but I think my grandmother, her mother, gave it to my grandmother when she was about seven, because she's still there. Because I saw when it was day in October. That's that air freshener thing. So, I've probably got more relations, but ones that I don't really know. So whenever I go, I usually spend time with my husband's relations. And if I need to go anywhere, they take me around. Otherwise, I get into a taxi and just do my own thing. So when you moved from Jamaica to the UK, how did you say goodbye to Jamaica and to the to your friends and family there? Well, I just tell them I was going to England and that's it. Didn't do anything else. It's not like here where you'd probably have a party or something like that. You just tell your closest friend you're going to England because you don't know what it's going to be like. So... And I live with, as I said, I live with my grandparents, so they knew I was coming to join my mum and stepdad. So they were okay with it, as far as I didn't know. Because my nan says, if you didn't like it, you can come back. But I'm still here. And they've gone to the other side, so. But I did go back and see them, like. And the children, they met the children. So, and I've travelled, I've been all over the place, so, I've met people, like when I work in Lewis's, I've met friends, and they move from here to America, so I go to America, spend weeks, time with them, come back, things like that. Didn't have any problem going places. Because I'd go away like most weekends with the children. If I take two, my husband looks after two. And then next time I go away, I take two. And he looks after the other two. When I go to Jamaica and take two, he looks after two. And so and so, that's how we work it. The only time we all go away to get is when we go to London, when school holidays. Somebody would loan us a house and we'd stop in London for a week. And then we'd go to Southampton for a week and somebody would loan us a house. Again, and that's it. But those were my, like my husband's relation in London and Southampton. And as I said, I get on with all his relations. Even Jamaica, wherever, Canada. Yeah. So what were your first impressions and experiences of Birmingham? And how did it differ from Port Antonio? The houses are different because we don't need a fire. Because we used to, our, our first, our first address was Kingswood Road. That's where mommy and daddy had a house. And it was like, part of it was rented out. My sister and I shared the attic. And then he had his own room. And then Alfred came along. No, Alfred, and then he stuck two boys, they had a room, that's it. And the girls were in the attic because we had a big attic. So we shared the attic, my sister and I. And after that, as I said, I got married when I was 18 because it was 18 years, one month, when I got married in St. Mary's in the village. Because you had to have permission to get married. 
and things like that. My husband brother used to live at my mum's house and he used to come visit him, so that's how come we met. So that's how we got together. And then we were married about 11 months after we met and moved from Kingswood Road, moved from Kingswood Road to live in um, Strencham Hill, because that's where my husband used to live. And then we moved from there and we live in Sandford Road, which was near to mommy because she could help with the children. And then they moved from Kingswood Road to St Albans Road, which wasn't too far so the kids could walk up. Children all went to Park Hill School with my brothers and sisters. And then my sisters went to Mosley School because it used to be a grammar school. Yeah, the three of them, Eileen, Daryl, Alfred, they went there when they were old enough, because they did their some exam to get there. You just blend in with everybody and do whatever everybody does. So it didn't really bother me. We made friends, because I've got a couple of friends in their 80s that I met when I first got married and we're still friends. And sometimes, because Silver is um, 86, 87 and Merle's about 84 and I still visit them now and then, not very often, because it's a long way to go to James Le Wood. So whenever I can, I get on the bus in the summer, usually visit, because I don't mind a walk in when you get off the bus. And if Joy's free, then she'll drive me over there. If they've got to wed in or christening or something, I'll be there. And it's the same this side. So, you meet people, you, if you get on with them, you become friends. And that means you're friends for life, unless they die. Or emigrate or something like that. I've been to different evening classes, because most on the Mosley Road, where's the Gap Centre? On the Mosley Road. Where? Across from the library. Oh, pretty much, yeah. Because you know that building. I'm not sure what they do inside. It's a, the Mosley Community House. Yes, Where's that's... Sports, yeah, because yeah, I used to go to evening class there. Where did English? Because we speak in Jamaica, you speak different from the people here when you come to England. So to blend in, you've got to learn, which you did. And then you used to go to, did a course in Garrett Screen, a city in Gale 7061. I did a catering course there and I did a bookkeeping course at the Mosley School where the number one bus runs down there. And the last time I went to another school was when I did a computer course in Northfield. I used to go one day a week over there to do a computer course. I've worked different jobs, but the longest one I've spent was it about 20 years in Lewis's. And then when I left Lewis's, because I was ill, because I had a thyroid problem. So I was off work for a couple of years. And then I got a job on the Moser Road, where it's now Quick Fit, but it used to be Dixon's Decorators Merchant, because I started there eight, August 88. And then they moved from there down to where the Julak Centre is. And I stopped on work until I retired 65. But I had left them because I went to Jamaica, spent three months, 
came back, I did one day a week at Dixon's, and then I got to know the job on Brighton Road at being cautious, they built this as a receptionist and doing other things. And after that, I was there until my husband needed me more, so I gave up and looked after my husband. But I had fun, I had a good time in those seas. I got on with the managers, they were brilliant. Some of them, not all, but some were brilliant. I got on with the people at Dixon's, all of them. At Dixon's, um, they were very kind. There was Brian Dixon's, that's the person who, well his dad was nice, Brian. Okay, and he'd come over and he'll sit down and he'll talk to you. You know, you didn't have to go in the office. He comes, he pulls the chair up by your desk and he'll sit there and he'll talk to you. His children come, he had a boy and a girl. They came, they did a stint when they're not at school in the office and we all talked together. Um, when coming up to Christmas now, Brian Dixon, they would have, send a list out, hawks you. On the list you'd have um, turkey, capon, or m and gift vouchers. You select what you want. And he'd go around all the stores he had, quite a few. And he'd hand stuff out to everybody and wish them a Merry Christmas. Because I used to have a turkey which he, um, the manager, the branch manager would drop off, I roast it, he come back and he picked it up and then everybody have lunch. And Brian Dixon would have his lunch there because they'd leave a plate of turkey and what's ever free. Lucy's were different but we still have fun. Because after Christmas you have to prepare for the sale. So you go in and you have, if you go in, you work on your day off, you get day pay, but you get a day off as well in lieu of working that time. And as I said, I had some very good managers there. Well, 99% was very good, one wasn't, which didn't bother me because I got on and I wasn't with him very long, the one that I didn't like very much. Um, Corshaws, they're very good, because I still go and see them, and they pop in and see me. Because um, I was just writing, because it's Bobby's and his daughter's birthday, it's just writing them birthday cards. They'll bring me stuff, loads of stuff at Christmas and end up giving them away because I don't need it. But it's just a thought that counts. So I get on with them. And as I said, I get on with my neighbours because I'll pop next door after if you're gone. I know the hen neighbour, Jean, she's gone to the doctors this morning. And there's Ali across the road. Um, there's Rafiq and there's Mary and she just moved across 12 months ago this month I think they came yeah I'm not sure where she's from I still haven't talked her because I keep forget we talk about other things you forget talks where the people come from I know Rafiq is from the Pakistan Ali's Pakistan the other couples I'm not sure Jean's Irish, next to Jean, he's from Pakistan, because I've been in their house, we talk. Next door is Irish, I've been in daily, like how she's had an operation last week, yeah. Yeah, she had an operation last week. So I'll pop in to make sure she's okay while Brian is out. And I get on with the neighbours along here as well, because, um, Ali's two daughters bought the house next door. And then Sanjay is 
young man that sometimes helps me with the garden. He works at the forum. And I think next to him is um, Dennis. He's got the same name as my brother and same surname as myself, but we're not related. And his wife. I don't know the name of the people live at the end, but we still say hello. Can never remember names anyway. So I'll get on with most people. How do you think your working life would have differed if you'd stayed in Jamaica? Um, it would have been a lot different. Um, if I didn't work for someone, I'd probably do more or less what my nan did, buy and sell things. So it would be a lot different in Jamaica. Probably would have been married, I don't know, can never tell. So it would have been a lot different. Because I know my friends are married. Well, the one is stopped, which she's, um, she's been married three times. Two of her husband died. And the other one, they were divorced. Which I met both husbands, which were very nice. Um, I didn't meet other friends' husband, but I knew one of the, the one, one of my friends, he's a um, pastor at the Society of Friends Church, because I went and saw her while I was there. And I just got back from seeing a friend who's just died in Jamaica, that lives in St. Mary, I just got back from St. Mary and down, the rain just came down. Shh. So I had to dash from the car into the church because church had just finished to say hello to her. And we talked for a little bit. And I told her I was staying with a friend up the road, which she knew. So, and then another friend came and visited Lori. She was married, but her husband died. And lots of other people that you see around, so. Some that I needed to see, I didn't see because they weren't available. And because I keep going backwards and forwards from my friend to my house in Eastern Portland, I didn't get to see a lot of people and the weather wasn't very good because it's probably still raining out there now. Never stop. It would rain in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, or the opposite rain. Or if you're in Portland and you go somewhere else, a different parish, it's probably dry. While it's wet in Portland, or dry in Portland, wet in Sentinus, or wherever, things like that. But it didn't matter, because I got my boots and my rain max, so I just get up and go. Um, which new traditions did you adopt into your life after migrating? Hmm, let's see now. Oh, oh I don't think I adopted anything extra because I went to Baptist Church in Jamaica and attended the Baptist church that used to be on the Mosley Road. Now I'll go to the new Baptist church in King's Seat. Because we used to get up on Sundays. So we'd go travel to, say, about a mile, couple of miles to the Baptist church with my nan and my cousins. Come back, we go to Sunday school. And then we'd go to evening service. Sunday school would have been a different church. We go, we go to the evangelist church. And the evening service, we'd go to the Society of Friends because it's much nearer. And then just before you go home, we go to the church that the, um, 
it's one that they make a lot of noise in the jump and the sing and they fall over in spirit, the claim, things like that. You just stop and watch them on the way before you walk home to your house. So, but here, that's the only thing we don't have here. Or if they do, I've never been to one. Yes, I have. But it wasn't on the side of the road. It's next to the the bath, the swimming baths. There used to be a church there. They make a lot of noise and shake and flop their hands all about. And I've been once and I didn't go back. I came home with a headache, so I said I wouldn't be going back. Um, the only thing that's probably different in the Caribbean, uh, coming up to Christmas now, we'd make um, certain things for Christmas, which only if you're Caribbean, you'd probably make it here. Like we'd make sorrel. We'll have, um, in Jamaica, we'd, we've got the plant, so you pick the sorrel, take it off the liquid pot, dry it, and then you put it in a container, put boiling water on, put ginger in, you make a sorrel drink. Our pudding in the Caribbean would have been, we'd make um, a sweet potato pudding, which you grate the sweet potato, um, cocoa, different things. You could put yam in it as well. And you'd mix it all up with flour and cornmeal and coconut. You grate the coconut, you put it all in, mix it up and you bake it. That's our pudding, which is completely different from what you have here. Our Christmas pudding is the same, I think. No, you've got something different for your Christmas pudding, because ours, we put all the rum and all of that stuff, all the fruits, because my sister still makes it, where she soaks the fruit, like for 12 months, in rum in sherry and then you use that to make a cake so you can probably get drunk <laughs> just eating a slice of cake um we didn't have a christmas tree in our house when i was growing up but you'd pick um we used to have this flowers and it's like a liquor shaped like a little bell I think and you pick it it's got green leaves and you can hang it up in the house like that things like that but we didn't have a Christmas tree I think it's later on they had Christmas trees but we didn't but you still have fun because you got all the little fire rockets you make your own dolls you make your own toys you do things like that and the close the toys and so at Christmas you'd have a new outfit and you go to the parties that they have at school or in the courthouse or wherever so and I think at Christmas we had different fruits as well because where you've got like apples and mangoes and all of this in the summer, Christmas, you don't have those. You can still get them because the same fruit grows different parishes, but different times. So I don't know why. And you play in the, your garden. You've got a garden and your friends come and you play. Or if you've got a veranda, you play on the veranda. So that's the only thing that's different here. So when you return to Jamaica to visit, how, how do you feel when going back? Happy, because I have fun. And there you can go wherever you, well, I'll go wherever I feel like and nobody bothers me. It's warm, even if it's raining, it's lovely and warm, so you don't have to pad up. As I said, I took my boots and rain mac 
because I needed, I know it was going to rain in October and as far as I do know it's still raining, probably rains now until about January. You'll have sunshine in between and it's still warm if you live near the sea and people go to the sea. Our school was near the sea because we used to play in it. White sand. Fun. Have fun. And I go and visit whosoever I want to visit. I walk it if I don't feel like catching a minibus or a taxi. I just walk. I don't mind. How did you share your heritage with your children and how did they share it with theirs? Um, my husband taught the kids to cook, I didn't. But we take them to Jamaica and let them try all the different fruits and stuff. Some like it, some didn't. My daughter that lives in Sunderland Road, she doesn't like Caribbean food. Because the first time I took her to Jamaica, um, and it was at my mother-in-law house. She died by then. Um, my husband's niece was there in the house on her own, and the electric went. So we had to light with a glass lamp with paraffin in. So we had to light that. And the bathroom, we were in the front bedroom. There's another bedroom behind that. The bathroom was at the back. So we were going through to the bathroom and Sylvia screamed and I dropped the lamp. It's all concrete floor. So that's smashed. And we had to, had to find my way back to my handbag, find a liquid torch. And then the shops are open late as well. So we went up to the shop. There used to be this liquor shop and we could buy replacement lamps and stuff like that. And my son that died loves it because he loves to go around with the liquor boys and play in the rivers and things like that, what they do. He didn't climb the trees, but he did go around with the liquor children in the district, but so he wouldn't. The reason why she screamed was because a red ant, whenever it's going to rain, all the different stuff comes up. Red ants will come into the house. Because some bits of it are wooden house, even if it's got concrete floor. Some of it could be wood and they still come in. And when it bitten Sylvia in the toe, that's why I dropped the lamp, because she'd scream, didn't know what was going. It was okay after that. Because of that, she isn't very keen. She's been back because she's been with Joy. I've never taken her. But she's been, the two daughters went with my husband to Jamaica and spent a month there. And she isn't keen on the mosquitoes either. Sand flies are not very nice because those bite you, whether you're at the beach or not. And it's not far from the sea. You can go to the sea whenever you feel like. So that's what we do. Because usually we'd have a picnic by the seaside, which is fun as well. Or you've got a crowd of people and they get together and have their own thing, you know, like a little outing. You go by the sea, you walk it if you want to, because it's not far. And you just mess about in the sea. Some people swim, some people go way out. I'm not going out there, because you never know what's out there. And you can walk for miles on the beach and pick shells up and do whatever you want to do. 
and it's a bit different from when I was growing up as well, when I went the last time. Because places we weren't able to go, we can go to now. Because they like redesign the arbors. No, we used to have loads of tourist boats when I was young. But they don't go to Portland and Port Antonio anymore. Because the water isn't deep enough. I don't know what happened there. They said it's not deep enough for the boats to come in. But you've got all the yachts and everything lying up out there that can get in. But the tourist boats doesn't. We used to go, um, when I was young, we used to go rafting as well. Where you put the bamboos together and make a raft and have a long pole and just go down the river. I think they still do that in Jamaica from the Rio Grande. Go down to, I'm not sure if it's Marant Bay or wherever they go, right down to the seaside. I think they still do that. But there's places in Jamaica I've never been to, because I've never been to the Rio Grande, although it's not too far from where we live. I've never travelled there. But you can have your own, make your own fun when you go to Jamaica. You don't have to go to all the parties and all that. Just sitting down talking with your friends is friendly. You know, it's fun. And have a good giggle, which we did. So I don't mind going. And I'll probably go soon again. When did Birmingham begin to feel like home for you? It always feel like home. The only thing I miss was the sunshine. Because you just get used to things. You just adapt. Which was no problem. And as I said, I had my brothers and sisters. Our next door neighbour was from Jamaica. She had children. And the people I've lived with, when you move from house to house, they were Jamaicans. So you probably have the odd white. But you live, well, I suppose we live mainly with Jamaicans and you mix with Jamaicans. But when you work, like how, when you work like in Lois's or House of Fray's or wherever, you mix with those people as well. Because there was a group of us. Um, Rose was black, myself was black, and they were all white. And every weekend we'd find somewhere else to go in Wales. I'd just leave the children with my husband and go off for the weekend. We'd go France, we'd go Belgium. So we just go off, just a group. And we have fun. We go, we used to have the Mayfair. You know, it's TK Maxx now, but on top. They used to do all the old time music hall thing. And you just come in from work. What? Dress? You half go again. Because you could buy what? I don't eat sausages. I don't like sausages and mash and all that stuff. But you could pay is it one pound fifty. You get a three course meal at the Mayfield. This was years ago. Sixties, seventies. We used to go, I used to go to it. The friends I go so to it. As I said, they were a mixture. And they all smoke apart from myself. Because I tried menthol. <coughs> no. But all the ladies, they were all ladies. And they all smoke. And we go to the Mayfair, the Lacana, Maximilian. All around Broad Street. I used to go to Broad Street with all the American singers who used to come over with my sisters. Um, top rank, that place by the reservoir, we used to go. And we have fun. And you just get a taxi home and that's it. And get up in the morning and go to work. 
no people that don't seems to they go out for the night and they can't go to work the morning after you can remember we came back from france early morning sunday or belgium and you have to be at work for nine o'clock on monday you have no excuse but now people seem to find so many excuses for not going to work You just get on with life. And as I said, I make friends. You've got your neighbours. You go into their house, they come into your house. You get on with it. It doesn't matter if you're black, green, white, yellow. You get on with things. What advice would you give to anybody migrating? Just adapt. If you adapt to what is surrounding and try and get on with people, even if they're nasty to you, ignore them and get on with others because there's always somebody you'll get on with. You don't have to argue with everybody. I don't argue. I live next door. We came here 19... Was it 1967? And I get on with my neighbours. And I hit in and out. Next door, Sharon. She used to come and sleep in our house. With the girls. Because they were friends. Because she was in between. Joyce, the youngest, Sharon, Sophie. All in the bedroom. The play. We go out, we take her with us wherever we go, you know. My husband take the girls out, she's along with them as well. You try and get on with people, because you never know when you need your neighbours. When my husband was ill, my neighbours knock. If you need anything, just knock on the door. Thankfully we didn't, because we get all the help we needed. Had the granddaughters that came. Everybody wants to feed it. You know, people come in. Everybody wants to help. So you try and get on with people. But people seem to be cantankerous these days. I don't know. There's some very nasty people about. Don't get me wrong. Some people are not very nice. But you just ignore them. If you see them coming, you walk the other side of the road. You don't have to argue with them. And it's too much energy arguing with people. If I'm going to argue with Mr Williams, I go and sleep. Because he wastes energy then. So, if he's going to start arguing, I'll just go to bed. Fast asleep. He can argue as much as he likes. I don't bother. So people not talking. To, I've got friends. Her husband left her for somebody else. Had a child with this other person. And she takes the child in. And they all end up in America. See, you get on with people. I know some people couldn't cope. But that's what people should be like anyway. She's dead now, Rose. She was lovely. First time I met her, met her at Lois's, And she was brilliant. And my husband met her and I got on like a house on fire. And I go to her house. If my husband is in the Caribbean for Christmas, because we used to like to go at Christmas sometimes. When his mum was alive, he'd go. And I'd go to my friend in Arlington and have a good time. Even though my mother used to live up the road, but I'd rather go over to Rose and have a good time. So I got on with her. I got on with Meryl. I got on with Sylvia. And they were all lovely people. And I still, Rose dead and gone. 
who went to her daughter's wedding in America. She moved to Jamaica, went to Jamaica, see Jamaica. She went blind, we got on. She went back to America, that's where she died. And she was lovely. What do you think it means to be a Brummie? Well, a Brummies, you can be anyone you want to be or anybody you'd like to be, as long as you're happy. I'm happy. I've got no problems. And if you get problems, you'd cope with it as best as you can. We all get problems now and then. Because I used to have loads with my husband. He gets up, there's always something wrong with him. So, we get it sorted. And you get on with life. You don't need complaining about this and that. You get on, you do what you can. Because you complain, you still have to do it. So don't see why it makes sense complaining. You still have to get on and do it. Do you feel that telling your story has helped you to feel more confident um, about talking about yourself? Yes, yes, yeah. I'm more like talking about, or talk to my friends. How have you felt about telling your story to a young person like myself? No different than if I've told it to somebody 100 years old. And finally, do you have any thoughts about how your story might help people in Birmingham when they talk about migration? Well, I hope it helps somebody. You know, if somebody nasty to you, try the next person. They might be much nicer. You know, you can't all be the same. So, if you don't get on with Tom, try Harry. Or Billy, you might get on a lot better. You never know. So that's how I live anyway. If my neighbours doesn't talk to me, no skin off my nose, doesn't bother me. Because the others will talk to me. They go in their houses, they come in mine. So, you know, you just make the best of things instead of complaining. People complain too much anyway. If they can't go Buy a loaf of bread. Buy half a loaf. You don't have to have a full loaf. Because you, well, some people would probably eat it all in one go. But, you know, if you can't buy a leg of lamb, buy half. Or buy a chicken or something cheaper. Just try and get on. Instead of complaining all the time about silly things. Well, some of it's silly. <laughs>